Hello and uh, welcome to our channel uh, that is uh, uh, practice, Clinical Practice Medicine. Here we will discuss uh, about the common topics in the practice that is upper respiratory tract infection in this first video. Uh, usually the management and the practical tips in short we will discuss. So uh, upper respiratory tract infections are usually caused by the viruses that it influenza, para-influenza, RSV, corona, adeno, entero. Such viruses are the most common causes of upper respiratory tract infections. Only 3% of the uh, upper respiratory tract cases are bacterial. Usual duration is 2 to 10 days. So that we need to understand because uh, if the patient come on a day 1 or 2, you need to tell them that it will take 10 days. The usual symptoms are cough, cold, fever, sneezing, lymphadenopathy, throat pain and burning. Uh, running nose can also be there. Uh, expectoration white or yellow can also be there. Uh, in examination, you need to see that pulse rate if it is going out of proportion to the temperature, if the blood pressure is going low, if the respiratory rate is going high, the SpO2 is going low, then you may have to consider the lower respiratory tract infection because in upper respiratory tract infection, usually these things will not happen. Uh, what we will find in the throat, it will be a congested red throat. Sometimes there can be ulcer, sometimes there can be a lymph nodes. In chest examination, the uh, lung examination is very important because you need to rule out the lower respiratory tract infection because then the patient may require uh, admission. So basically, we'll focus on the treatment. You need to listen to the patient, what the patients are saying. If the patient is saying he had a fever, so you cover it with the paracetamol. If the patient had a mainly the cough problem uh, and you feel like it is a non-infective, non-bacterial type of uh, expectoration and cough, you can, act, you can give centrally acting cough suppression that is dextromethorphan. Uh, if there are congestion is the main problem like throat pain and all, you give antihistaminics that is first or second generation chlorpheniramine, diphenhydramine, cetrazine, levocetrazine, loratidine. Such antihistaminics can be given. You can add the decongestant that is phenylephrine can be added. Steam is a very good decongestant because uh, it can be uh, used with the local application of uh, wicks or balm or something and it will act uh, at a very good decongestant uh, so you can add to that therapy uh, betadine gargles or chlorhexidine gargle can also work because it has some uh, antiviral and antibacterial property so that can also be uh, added to the treatment so basically you need to see if the congestion is more you have to add decongestant and antihistaminics to suppress the cough you can give dextromethorphan add steam and betadine gargles and if there is a fever you cover it with the paracetamol weakness is also sometimes part due to viral infection for myalgia for that also the paracetamol will work well when to add antibiotics is a very important question when there is a as per the harrison it is when there is a prolonged course of illness when there is an increased severity of symptoms when there is a localization of disease like sinuses, mastoid, ear, epiglottis, neck tissue, when such localization occurs, usually it is a bacterial. So, if such a localization occurs, if the symptoms are out of proportion in severity or it is a prolonged course, then 2 to 10 days normally, it may be due to bacterial, then you have to add antibiotics. Antibiotics usually added are azithromycin, amoxicillin, sometimes you also can use azithro my uh, amoxicillin plus clavonate. Uh, there are very important cause in bacterial is a streptococcal pharyngitis because in future it can lead to the rheumatic fever. So how do you identify that streptococcal pharyngitis? It can have a exudate or a swelling over the tonsil and the pharynx. The temperature would be high that is more than 100.9. There can be a lymph node also. If such presentation with exudate in the throat is there, you have to cover it with the antibiotic because it can be streptococcal can lead to the rheumatic fever. So and also you need to consider the local uh, your geographical condition and the cases uh, around you because if there is a corona pandemic like we have that is going on or if there is a swine flu cases are there in the community then you had to uh, treat this upper respiratory tract in, conju uh, in conjunction with that because uh, they also start with the upper respiratory tract infection uh, like illnesses. So the special consideration should be given to the corona and swine flu. If lungs are affected or oxygenation is low then you had to refer the patient to the higher center because then it is not no longer upper respiratory tract infection it is a lower respiratory tract infection then you had to uh, refer them to the higher centers. 
so special consideration for corona and swine flu according to the uh, your uh, geography and time okay uh, sometimes you see uh, like you uh, many of the young uh, doctors feel that my prescription for uh, this thing is not working then just see your preparation sometimes the prescription contains a lot of mucolytics like embroxol n acetyl cysteine guafenacin now if if you think that is it a thick purulent kind of a uh, pus uh, and uh, pus and cough and expectoration and you want to uh, like uh, make it a liquid then you add this mucolytics otherwise there is no much role in mucolytics in upper respiratory tract so if you want to uh, make the cough liquefy then and then you add such component or uh, use the combination with such component if you give only uh, such drugs like embroxol or n acetylcysteine the upper respiratory tract patient will not get relieved uh, sometimes we see a lot of cough preparations with the terbutaline or salbutamol and they were being prescribed if they are they are the bronchodilators if the patient have a bronchoconstriction in the chest or something like that then you can add uh, or the patient having COPD uh, or asthma you can add such bronchodilatory treatment not for particularly for the upper respiratory tract uh, sometimes we see montelukast preparation montelukast is a leukotriene antagonist basically uh, it has a role in exertional asthma as well as in uh, your uh, allergic kind of a phenomena so if such phenomena is there you can give montelukast otherwise uh, there is no need to add montelukast Role of caffeine is just to antagonize the sedation caused by the antihistaminics what we have already seen. So your usual symptom, uh, usual treatment uh, goes around with like antihistaminics, decongestion like phenylephrine, steam, betadine, dextromethorphan and paracetamol. Uh, some people also uh, uh, like to add such mucolytics uh, in some combination but only sole mucolytics will not work that you need to understand. So your take home message would be you are, uh, are to the power of five that is the right dose we have mentioned the dose on the slides right drug according to your symptoms right combination like what you are using and what we uh, what the patient wants that combination you had to choose right duration that two to ten days is very important that duration that time you have to cover with that uh, drugs and ruling out the other important differential and local diseases like uh, tonsillitis sinusitis neck diseases Corona, H1N1, so such important differential and local disease should be ruled out uh, when you are treating your upper respiratory infection. Hope uh, you all have got some insight of upper respiratory infection management and some practical tips. Uh, please uh, share this video.